Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture here at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. This week we start in the traditional financial world. In the last few weeks, we heard about Zhao Peng Zhao, the former CEO of Binance that went to prison for money laundering. In this week, the TD Bank, that is the 10th largest bank, according to this list here by assets in the United States, has pleaded guilty to criminal charges related to money laundering. The bank will pay a total of 3 billion US dollar in fines, which is the largest penalty ever imposed for violating the Bank Secrecy Act. TD Bank failed to properly monitor 18.3 trillion US dollar worth of questionable transactions between 2014 and 2023, allowing criminals to move over 670 million through their accounts. And none of the top banking executives responsible are going to jail, at least for now, as presented here in this article. The bank failures were widespread and long-lasting. Employees knew about the problems but didn't fix them. In some cases, bank workers even helped criminals by accepting bribes. And the bank slogan, America's most convenient bank, became a joke among employees who knew it was convenient for criminals too. This isn't the first time TD Bank has been in trouble for money laundering. They paid a fine in 2013 for laundering money for drug cartels, terrorist organizations and sanctioned countries such as Iran and North Korea. As part of the settlement, TD Bank must improve its anti-money laundering program and will be watched closely by an independent monitor for four years. The government is also investigating and charging individual people involved in the money laundering scheme, including some bank employees. However, no high-level executives have been charged yet. Some critics argue that until top banking executives face personal consequences, banks might continue to see money laundering as just cost of doing business. So if you're laundering 18 trillions worth of transactions for drug cartels, terrorist organizations and sanctioned countries, make sure no cryptocurrencies are involved. The next article is about a potential cryptocurrency scam. It's the following article here. Popular YouTube creator Mr. Beast has been accused of participating in cryptocurrency promote and dump schemes, allegedly earning over 10 million US dollars. The blockchain investigator Soma XBT made these claims. It's in these tweets here, and he suggests that Mr. Beast invested in low cap cryptocurrency tokens and used his influence to inflate their value before selling his shares for a profit. And the most notable example involves a 100,000 US dollar investment in Super Farm DAO, where Mr. Beast allegedly made over 9 billion by promoting and then selling the super token. So uh, this is explained in these tweets here uh, to a great detail with screenshots and also links to transactions. His investigations outlines similar activities with other cryptocurrency projects, including Polychain, MonsterStack, VPP and ShopX. And in these cases, Mr. Beast is accused of receiving token allocations, promoting the project and then selling his tokens for a significant profits. While it's unclear whether uh, Mr. Beast intentionally misinterpreted his stance on these projects, his alleged actions have sparked ethical concerns within the cryptocurrency community. Critics argue that such pump and dump activities involving low cap tokens are detrimental to both the specific projects and broader cryptocurrency sector. Some industry experts have spoken out against these practices, stating that they destroy value for retail investors and the crypto market in general. It's worth noting that while these actions may be ethically questionable, it's not clear if they violate any laws. 
The last article is about Donald Trump. It's about the World Liberty Financial Coin that we also discussed and analyzed in class. So what is it about? Former US President Donald Trump has launched the World Liberty Financial VLFI token, marking the first time a US President candidate has introduced a crypto asset directly tied to their political campaign. This token aims to revolutionize financial markets by leveraging decentralized finance and creating new financial opportunities for users worldwide. The token is being launched at a 1.5 billion US dollar valuation with plans to raise 300 million US dollars in its initial sale. And so far, 906 million um, tokens were sold at a price of 1.5 cents. And also on this side, we see the team with the chief crypto advocate and his three Web3 ambassadors. And that means the token sale resulted so far in 13.5 million US dollar. And also the sale seemed to slow down as we see in the following graph here. So in the beginning, it starts quite well. And now it seems to slow down. Currently, we are at 13.5 million US dollar. So the VLFI token, it will function as a governance token for the World Liberty Financial Platform, allowing holders to participate in decision making and policy approvals. Importantly, the token is non-tradable. Instead, its primary purpose is to give users voting rights on the platform's future direction and the token will enable users to engage in DeFi activities such as borrowing, lending and creating liquidity pools, bypassing traditional banking institutions. So what does it mean non-tradable? And we took a deep dive in the coins implementation in the lecture and um, we see here the token, the source code of the token that we looked at. And we already see that the approval function here has been disabled, which needs approval. So either you're whitelisted or in a future contract, as it stated here, um, it may become transferable. The transfer from, it's not disabled here, but for transfer from, you need on one hand, you need to have it approved. And on the other hand, you need to have the update function working. And here we also see we have this allow list and can only send coins because update is used by transfer and transfer from. So that means both functions are currently not working. So you will receive the token, but you cannot send it anywhere. I'm not sure why they disabled the approve function here as the transfer from also uses update here underscore update so transfer from is not working probably uh, since they did not want to store any allowances they didn't enable it so you will get a soul bound fungible token unless the contract changes or you are in the allow list and they also have some blacklisting functionality such as admin burn and set excluded address. So the admin burn is here. Admin burn only can be called by the owner. And we also have a set excluded address where also the owner can exclude voting power. And this contract can change in future, um, but how can this change when blockchain is append only? It is possible since they use proxy contract following the Ethereum 1967. It's the following here, proxy storage slots. And with this, the code can change in future. So the Ethereum proxy contracts are a design pattern that allows for upgradability of smart contracts and the pattern involves separating the contract state and the logic 
where a proxy contract stores the state and delegates function calls to a separate implementation contract that contains the logic. And this setup enables developers to update the contract's logic by simply pointing the proxy to a new implementation contract without losing the state or requiring users to interact with the new contract address. The project has also formed partnership with established DeFi entities like Aave, a well-respected borrowing and lending platform with 7% of the total VLFI token supply marked for the Aave decentralized autonomous organization. And the question is, how is the crypto community reacting? Well, with skepticism. Um, and this quote from the CEO of Tezos puts it the best. I have it here. Um, well, the fact that a presidential candidate is backing this project is really its only differentiator between that and about 10 dozen similar uh, DeFi lending protocols. And other sites report that raising 13.5 million is way below the 300 million target. Well, not going into political discussions about the US presidential election, but regardless of the outcome, Trump's venture into the crypto world sends a signal. On the one hand, it highlights that a former and potential future US president has launched a cryptocurrencies, which could drive mainstream adoption and bring greater attention to the crypto space. On the other hand, if this venture fails, which is a possibility, it could have the opposite effect causing financial losses for adopters and potentially damaging confidence in similar DeFi projects. So this is a reminder that all these cost tokens here is no financial advice. I cannot predict the market and um, even explain why a meme coin, for example, Dogecoin, is still in the top 10 of the most valuable crypto assets.